Hey everybody, welcome back to the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A. That's the show where you send me your questions and I try to answer them. Your best chance of having your question read on the show is to send me an email at thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. You can also ask me a question in the comments below or you can ask me a question on Twitter at Frugal Filmmaker. Now today is Trivia Monday, which means it's the first Monday of the month and that's the day when I present to you a question about the Frugal Filmmaker and hopefully you can answer it if you can and if you can answer it first via email, you can win one of these. This is the Frugal Filmmaker Short Film Idea Deck, and it's a deck of cards with words and pictures and ideas that hopefully will help you complete your short film. So if you are interested in something like that, you can try and answer the trivia question and answer it first via email, as I said before. Or if you would still like one, you can go to printerstudio.com. If you missed my video last week, it was the Frugal Cage 2.0 video where I showed you various improvements that I made to the Frugal Camera Cage system which is a cage that surrounds your camera and gives you quarter 20 mounting points for all kinds of different stuff. This is probably the final version I'm gonna do on the basic cage itself, so I show you what improvements I've made, as well as some uh, problems that I've solved, which hopefully will help you, whether you're building the frugal cage or if you have your own cage system, maybe they will help you. Uh, so check out that video if you're interested. Our first questions come from email today, and the first one is from Sri, who says, you covered free stock photos and audio. Can you please let us know about free stock video footage? This is kind of a tricky question because in the past I've referred to sites like freesound.org for free sounds and sites like morgfile for free stock photos. But as far as free stock video, that's a little tougher. I know of some uh, subscription sites, but not quite sure about free stock video sites. So if anyone actually out there knows of some stock video sites, can you please comment below in the description to help Sri figure out where those are. I've never really had to use stock footage in the past. The one time I went looking for it was for a shot in my thesis film, Collection Day, where I needed a kind of a futuristic building. And I wasn't able to find one on any stock footage sites that wasn't of a reasonable price. They were like 80 bucks they wanted for an HD video clip, and that was pretty steep. So I ended up crafting one from scratch, just taking kind of a free stock photo and then uh, putting a special effect over it to make the clouds move, but I did that all on my own because I wasn't able to find a free shot that I wanted. So if anyone knows of any stock video footage sites, please comment below. It helps free out, and it would be good for all of us to know where those are. Our next question comes from Pedro Calasea, who says, Please, can you suggest me a tutorial video where it shows the focal distance of every shot on a short film? And Kind of what uh, Pedro was asking about here in the rest of his letter. He was just wondering about focal lengths and how they look and when you should use them. And I responded to him via email that that's a really broad topic because, of course, you can use any focal length for a variety of purposes. And it's way beyond the scope of this uh, Q&A show to kind of go into every single way you can use a lens. Obviously, there's a zillion ways you can do that. But what you should really be aware of as a filmmaker making any film is the effect different focal lengths have on the human face. Since you will probably be having characters in your movie... And the lens you use, the, whether it's a prime or a zoom or whatever, the focal length is going to make your actor look really different. If you use a wide-angle lens, for example, on them in a close-up, they're going to look really distorted and weird. And if you use a telephoto lens or a longer lens, it's really going to flatten out that, that person and create a soft background. So what I did do for Pedro was I sent him a link to a photography website that actually covered all the different focal lengths and how they looked or how they made a specific model look. And it went all the way from distorted to flat and everything in between. And you could kind of see exactly what you were going to get based on what the focal length was. Of course, there's all different factors, you know, how you can make someone look, especially lighting. Uh, but as far as the specific focal length question, I think this is a really good reference. And if you want to check out that link below, I highly recommend it. Because it's really an eye-opener to see the same person in the same setting and the same lighting and how the focal lengths really change their appearance. It's really, really interesting. So check that out. Okay, our next question comes from Menino Builders who says, hey, I just started watching some of your YouTube videos. Do you have any vids on lighting a person you're interviewing indoors with a black background or slightly lightened back? Um, and I, a long time ago, created a three-point lighting video, and there's a ton of them out on YouTube, how to do three-point lighting. You have a key light, you have a fill light, and you have a backlight. That's three-point lighting. Now, if you're in front of a black background, nothing really changes other than you might want to throw a light on the background if you don't want it completely black, I guess, or if you want something lit up a little bit. You can throw an extra light back there, but you're still providing a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, please check out my video, Three Point Lighting. That's a good place to start. And there's a lot of other videos, many that are much better made than mine, that go into Three Point Lighting and give you diagrams and everything. Another video you should probably look at is the video I did about John Alton's test light. And that's a light that you have on the end of a stick, and you just kind of move it around your actor's face to see where the best key light is and how it affects them as you just move it around. That's really handy to have or to try, especially if you're new at this, you're not sure what the person's best side is. It helps to have a light you can move around without 
necessarily having a big one, you have to move around a light stand, but that's a good video I think you should check out as well. Three-point lighting is a really common skill to know and learn. It's really important, it's real basic. Of course, you can always bend the rules um, as you get to know how to do these things. Some people don't like to use a backlight at all, for example. However, if you are gonna be in front of a black screen, you might wanna consider a backlight because it will help separate the person from the, the black screen, especially if they're wearing dark colors, which should probably be a no-no. I mean, tell them, you know, wear something neutral unless you want them in all black. They may appear, however, as a floating head. So be careful and experiment, know what works, try what works, maybe uh, ask them to bring a different change of clothes or many, several different changes of clothes so you can get the best result. Uh, but black backgrounds can be cool looking. Just make sure that you've got some way of separating them from that background. Otherwise the black background might swallow their body and all they'll have is, is a, a head talking. So be aware of that. Okay, our next letter comes from Thomas Stump, who says, Hey, I moved to the NYC area last year and joined a small group of people for a series of short films, but haven't really made any film connections outside that. What are some ways to find people to partner with and just have fun and film? We've had this question before about, you know, where do I find crew? Where do I find cast? How do I, I don't know anybody. How do, I, how do I go about networking? And I've had some suggestions in the past, you know, such as, you know, get together to get together with people that are shooting movies, go to film classes, take a film course, get to know people that are doing the same things, audit an acting class. Um, you can always go to a production company, perhaps, and, you know, try and find out people that are willing to do stuff outside of work. I'm actually in a really interesting position because right now I could easily find a cast and crew for any short film I wanted to make because I just graduated from grad school and I know a lot of people that are interested in making movies. However, spoiler alert, I'm about to move to a remote corner of the United States. Not exactly gonna say where just yet, but trust me, it's a remote corner of the United States and I'm not gonna know anybody there. And as far as I can tell from doing research on the internet, there's not even a theater there that I can grab actors from. So, and there's no film courses being taught in this area. So I'm gonna go into a place totally cold, not knowing anybody, and it's a small town. Uh, so it's gonna be really interesting for me to find people, cast and crew, to make movies. Uh, but it's gonna be a real test for me also because I've kind of been preaching for a while now. Oh, you go, this, this, go here, go here to find people, go here to find people. And, and you can do this anywhere, and it's not really that hard if you really put your mind to it. And so I'm gonna be tested. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm sure anybody who has advice could give it below in the comment section, or you can watch some of my old videos where I talked about doing these type of things, auditing classes and such. But you might wanna follow uh, the channel as I go off into this remote corner of the US and make an attempt to make a short film in a completely foreign environment uh, that I've been used to. And that might help you because I think I'm gonna be learning a lot of things and I'm gonna be sharing them on the channel and on the blog, and hopefully it will help people as it helps me because I am going to be able to make a movie one way or another. Finally, we have a comment from the last week's Q&A and it's from Ronan Filmer 6 who says, how do you record dialogue between two people with lav mics if that is your only option? Is it better to use one or two lav mics? Uh, this is a good question. I actually uh, have had guests on this show, you may have noticed. I had uh, Connie Critchlow a while ago who was a uh, first AC for me on Invader, one of my short films. And whenever I have two people on this show, I only have one lav mic. It's clipped to me and it's usually pointed toward the other person. That helps you record sound for both people. Now the better option is actually to have two lav mics, one on each person, so you will get the best level possible. I don't know if you noticed or not, but when Connie was on the show with me, I actually had to pull her closer to me or tell her to move closer to me, closer to the microphone because she's kind of soft-spoken. I didn't want to lose her when I only had one lav mic, the mic I was wearing. You pointed out in your comment that, you know, is it going to cause a problem in post if you have two lav mics? It's not going to cause a problem in post. And if you have them fairly close together, it's not going to cause a problem. Uh, but it's a better option because, let's say one of the mics fail, we still have another one that's nearby to record both people. But it's just a good idea to have two mics. Two mics are better than one. So that's what I think about that. I mentioned before, this is Trivia Monday, and you can have the opportunity to win the Frugal Filmmaker Short Film Idea Deck if you can answer a question that you would know if you follow the Frugal Filmmaker. And the question is this, is that many of you know that I use a Sony NEX 5N camera with adapted vintage lenses. Now the question to you is, what brand of vintage lenses do I use, and what is the series of those lenses that I use? So I'm looking for a brand name and I'm looking for the name of the series of lenses that I use. So if you know what the answer is, please send me an email. That's where I'll, that's the only way it'll count is if you send me an email, not a comment. 
send me an email to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. If you're the first one to answer, I will send you one of these. This will be your prize. There are no repeat winners, so if you don't win this time, just keep trying every month. We'll do Trivia Monday every month. First Monday of the month, you can have an opportunity to win then. So be on the lookout for another video this Thursday and a Q&A video the following Monday. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.